Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be finally talking about and reviewing Thanos Titan Consumed. It's a novel by Barry Liga and it is pretty awesome. I really enjoyed the book and it really made me like Thanos even more. Now the book isn't technically canon, but it kind of is. So I'm gonna explain more about that in the video and what I'm gonna do is talk about the story and go through it a little bit. And there's gonna be some spoilers. So if you wanna read the book, I will and watch this video but I'm gonna try to break down some of the stuff and talk about the more interesting points in the book and what we could possibly see from this book in the MCU and what things I think they might change and alter and hopefully we can't see it because this book is really awesome guys if you like Thanos in the MCU if you enjoyed his character in Infinity War then I would definitely read this book so if you're interested in hearing about any of that definitely stay tuned but before we begin make sure if you are subscribed to turn on your notifications to keep up with all my latest uploads and if you are new to the channel and you like this video definitely consider subscribing I always appreciate it so with that all out of the way let's get right into it so this book isn't officially canon but the author Barry Liga kind of wrote it like if it were I remember when the book was announced the notion was pretty much that it was going to be canon to the MCU like one of the Endgame comics or even for Avengers Infinity War like one of those comics but then it was announced that it wasn't going to be canon but if you guys look at the book I mean it says Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity and then it has MCU Thanos on it. And the book basically begins and ends with the snap, like during the snap. So what I'm assuming is that they're going to interject more eternal aspect into Thanos' origin. Because in the book, it doesn't really go too much into his deviant and eternal background. So I think they're going to interject that more into the MCU origin. If they ever show Thanos' upbringing on Titan, I think they'll interject Eros or Star Fox, the little brother of Thanos. And I think we'll actually see him pretty soon and I'll get into that maybe in another video But basically Eros is Thanos' little brother and they grew up on Titan together in some iterations Not in this one in particular, but he is basically not a deviant. He looks like an eternal a Titan He's just way less powerful than Thanos, but he's still pretty crazy Yeah, especially with the Eternals movie that's coming out and taking the place and the Marvel movie slate from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 Until it finds a new director the book begins with Thanos as a youth on Titan Titan being raised by his father Alars. Now I really like this. Uh, I loved seeing Thanos as a youth growing up kind of just like a normal kid. He's extremely insecure as he's growing up because of his furrowed chin, his physical size being much larger than any of the other Titans, and his purple skin which in this book on Titan is the color of death. So you'd wear purple to a funeral on Titan. So this is what he has to walk around at. His relationship with his father is extremely lackluster and as a kid growing up he yearns for acceptance from other people, his father, and he wants a social life. He wants friends. He's also curious about his mother, who's currently in a mental hospital on Titan, run by his father, Alars, who personally oversees that Thanos does not go anywhere near it and does not meet his mother. This naturally makes Thanos even more curious about the state of his mother and wanting more to see her. Thanos grows up as an outcast, but gains some friends. And on the day of his first kiss, he actually comes to the conclusion after he does all of his calculations that Titan's population is growing way too rapidly. They're going to run out of resources. They're going to run out of food. There's going to be dead bodies piled up in the streets and disease would be rampant. So thus he comes up with the 50% plan of random genocide on his planet to save half of them so that they would have enough resources and time to change their ways so they wouldn't get to that point in the future. Obviously his 50% deal isn't really taken too well even though he actually actually was going to put a deviant code in the whole random genocide system. So he was willing to die for his cause. So that was pretty cool. And I thought that put a little bit more emphasis into what he was doing. Like he really truly believed in this, but obviously that's not something that people want to hear. So he got exiled and the vessel that he was in was called the Exile One, but he rechristened it the sanctuary like he does to most of his spaceships. And the ship was actually, I believe going to an other planet, like a primitive planet, but he reroutes the navigation and he tries to go to Hala, where the Kree Empire is, to try to use their military force to go back to Titan and force the genocide upon them so he could save his planet. He navigates all the power in the vessel, which is not made for space travel, to the engines, and he puts himself in a self-induced coma so he wouldn't have to use any other energy. And when he wakes up, he's actually abducted by a slave ship that we come to know as the Golden Birth. And he makes some friends, one in particular, Cha Ragor, 
and we'll see him throughout the book and he helps Thanos once upon the golden birth now the reason that Thanos is actually working as a slave on this ship is because the leader which is referred to as his lordship he's some tyrannical crazy dude who really is very much a lunatic is running the ship and he has a henchman named Robo who can give you like crazy headache like they're called psychic spikes but I call him the headache man because that's basically what he is and so Thanos he can't really use his physicality here so he has to use his intelligence so I really like this part he works himself up the rankings of the ship and on the ship this is where he first hears mention of Asgard the Infinity Stones and the lore speaker which is an important player at the very end of the book so I'll get into that later so basically he works himself up the ranks and he kills Robo the headache man and he befriends an other alien Kebby who was his lordship's other henchman they actually put his lordship into kind of like a coma so the reason why they couldn't outright kill him is because this ship that he's on the golden birth is some kind of crazy alien ship that's tied directly to his lifeline so if his lordship dies then they all die so they have to find a smart way around it and they do I think they put him in some type of a coma which is really good I, I love seeing that Thanos is not all brute force from there they're in this pretty much void that his lordship was taking them in pretty much a pointless journey what Thanos does it's lead them to a jump gate similar to probably Guardians of the Galaxy when they go through that jump now on the other side they get apprehended by the Nova Corps and they take refuge on Xandar from here Thanos Kebby and Cha attempt to go to Asgard to Odin's vault and steal an infinity stone and the only way to get there is through wormhole to the Asgardian outpost Alfheim and take over an Asgardian ship that's actually coming through to that outpost to access the Bifrost to actually get to Asgard and so they go through the wormhole they get to the outpost but when they are there they find that their task is a little harder than they expected they get greeted by some Asgardian warriors Thanos cannot use his intelligence here so he has to use his physicality and he does some serious battle he gets pretty injured but he and Cha do escape Kebby unfortunately dies but I really like this part in the book because this is where Thanos starts getting more comfortable with his physicality and his size and his stature you see on Titan he was so insecure about him being a deviant and looking different and being bigger than everybody else the thing that he hated about himself and was so insecure about saved him right now so I really like that he really starts coming into and being more secure with his body and his physical attributes so that was a really good part in the book and after the battle they take the blood Edda through a wormhole and when they wake up they are in the Chitauri homeworld and they meet the other from Avengers 1 and basically the other gives the Chitauri to Thanos and now Thanos actually has an army to back him up so he plans on going to Titan to save his people but unfortunately he journeys there and it's already doomed but he goes to the surface of Titan with like a hazmat suit on to avoid any disease and he searches for any possible survivors and he goes into a mentorplex kind of like an apartment building and he meets a synthetic version of his father Alars that was put there and the synthesoid tells Thanos that Alars after Thanos was exiled did his own calculations after Thanos's prediction and found that Thanos was exactly right and the planet was doomed so he went around and took DNA samples from Titan's best and he made a gene library in hopes that Thanos would one day come back to Titan and take the gene library and clone his people to save his race for some reason this enrages Thanos seeing this fake version of his father that's reminding him of all the bad so he beheads the synthesoid and smashes it and he also destroyed the gene library and he cries you know you guys deserve this in anger and at last he whispers you guys could have survived half of you could have survived so he was incredibly saddened by what just happened and after this we can kind of see the upbringing of the mad titan we see him try to do the whole 50% thing on a couple of planets and we actually do see the planet that he goes to where Gamora is on he finds Gamora refreshing she's honest with him she tells him the truth about things most people fear Thanos but this little girl was innocent she doesn't know to fear Thanos at least not yet Thanos finds this really adoring so that's why he adopts her and you get to see a little bit more of the relationship with Gamora and Thanos and I really like this it really puts more emphasis on on Thanos's emotions especially when he has to kill Gamora in Avengers Infinity War so this puts a lot more behind that and I really enjoyed that you also see when he adopts Nebula for pretty much the sole reason of making Gamora better of having like a companion so they can better each other and you, you see the whole hatred that Thanos interjects into the 
girls relationship and they grew up hating each other and hating Thanos and it's the really toxic environment for any kids to be around and when Thanos goes around the universe and tries to impose his will he comes to a realization that it's just not possible there are trillions of lives and trillions of planets in the universe and he can't possibly save everyone unless he has an infinity stone or the infinity stone so he seeks out the lore speaker which the other mentions in more detail to him a lore speaker is basically somebody at this point in the book that is assumed to know all the stories in the universe that just has infinite knowledge basically so the other suggests this to Thanos that he could go there and learn about these infinity stones so that's exactly what Thanos does he goes and seeks out the lore speaker who lives near the Raven Sweep which was the area where that tyrannical lordship the ruler of the golden birth was taking them just nowhere this system called the Keldim Sorrow so he goes there he seeks out the lore speaker and the lore speaker tells him about Morag he tells him about all the infinity stones the Aether the Space Stone he was even gonna tell Thanos the location of the Soul Stone but then Thanos just cuts him off and tells him this is all nonsense and at that point the lore speaker says stand and Thanos stand against his will and we find that the lore speaker actually has the Mind Stone hopefully this is something that they can translate to the movies because I know that's been a big thing especially with me and other fans like I always wanted to know how did Thanos even get the Mind Stone and where was it before I always was curious about the origin of that and so the lore speaker's master plan was to get Thanos there and switch bodies with him and escape the Keldim sorrow but fortunately Gamora went down there and killed the lore speaker and that's how Thanos obtains the Mind Stone and this is where he goes on his quest to obtain all of them and then the book pretty much ends with him thinking during the snap you know some profound words the book was really awesome I recommend you guys pick it up and read it especially if you do like the MCU Thanos now the things I think we could possibly see in the movies the things I think will be translated to the MCU will probably be the origin of the Mind Stone I think that would be perfect there are even points when the lore speaker talks about the Celestials that big thing that you saw in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 he's on the searcher there are other entities that we'll see in Endgame I'll talk about that more in an Endgame video that I'm gonna make but I think some cosmic entities will be seen in Endgame and I think that Eros Star Fox Thanos' brother will be translated into the MCU and I think we might actually see him in Captain Marvel because I've heard some things about that and I want to go more in depth with that in another video but I definitely think they're gonna change at least Thanos' upbringing so I don't really review too many books so I'm not gonna give this book any number I'm just gonna say it's an awesome book I really liked it so let me know what you guys thought of the video if you liked it or if you didn't like it let me know if you're gonna pick up the book or if you're interested in reading it and let me know what you think out of anything that I said or if you happen to have already read the book let me know what you thought of the book and let me know what you think will come out of this book and into the MCU and that's pretty much it guys if you like the video leave me a thumbs up comment down below and if you want to subscribe I always appreciate it thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one